What's up, everybody? Welcome in to another episode. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, where we cover NASCAR regional action from coast to coast. This episode brought to you by Whelan Engineering, manufactured for over 70 years in America. Whelan Engineering. As always, yours truly, Chris Wilner here in the MRN studios and, of course, out in Connecticut, Mr. Kyle Ricky, K. Rick. Another week down, we are nearing the end of June, and boy oh boy, if your plate for short track racing wasn't full, it certainly is now because I am still recovering from a busy weekend. Even though we were out in Iowa covering the Cup Series weekend, we were all locked into flow racing and other devices watching all things short track racing, including trying to check you guys out from Stafford. How was your weekend? Yeah, trying to check us out from Stafford, but unfortunately, Mother Nature. <laughs> Mother Nature checked us out as well. And for a second Friday night in a row, uh, we were uh, washed out. And I'll be honest, this Friday night's not looking that great either. Um, the only day of the week it has rained in the last 28 days has been on Friday here in North in Connecticut, in the Northeast corner. So um, we'll try it again this week, but... I'm not overly optimistic from the forecasts that I'm seeing. So you're saying Mother Nature isn't a race fan, especially up in New England? She's not. Um, yeah, I mean, they're at the events at New Hampshire Motor Speedway in jeopardy this weekend. Uh, they they might face some pop-up showers here and there. It's been a rough time. Uh, however, our Monday night program, beautiful blue skies and zero humidity. So, um, Well, it's called Wild Thing Carts. Mother Nature doesn't deal with wild things. She's probably leaving that alone, so... We need to flip our programs around, I guess. But, uh, yeah, well, fingers crossed for this Friday. Yeah, hopefully so. I know the rest of the country is getting a pretty good dose of the heat wave that's going on. I know, you know, this weekend I'm scheduled to go up to Watkins Glen to be a part of the NBC crew covering the six hours at the Glen for IMSA. And it's going to be in the 90s on Sunday up in upstate New York. So certainly going to be hot. And, of course, it was hot this weekend at Iowa Speedway. For those that uh, listened in on MRN, kind of heard us talking about the heat. It was a plenty. It was like walking into an easy bake oven for sure. So uh, lots going on weather wise around the country. We didn't have rain there, luckily, but hopefully fingers crossed for everybody in New England coming up this weekend. Of course, we got a busy show. Lots of racing, as I talked about, coming on this weekend or last weekend. This weekend, we've got even more as well. Our big story this weekend, though, Justin Bonsignor, the three-time NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour champion, is going to go Xfinity Racing for the first time for Joe Gibbs Racing this weekend at the Magic Mile. So he'll join us in segment two to talk about that opportunity. And, of course, still racing for a fourth championship in the series against Ronnie Silk this year. We'll kind of dive into their 2024 tour schedule. But, Kyle, let's start with Iowa. And, of course, uh, over the weekend, the MRN Racing – MRN – crew was down there covering the racing action at Iowa Speedway. First of all, beautiful facility. Kudos to everyone that was involved. Rusty Wallace, of course, to help design that track, but the repave wasn't, wasn't a problem. It produced some of the best racing that we've seen on a short track, and uh, the ARCA race was certainly no different. Connor Zilich versus William Sawalich. Little banging fenders, little banging heads, and some tempers afterwards. What'd you think of the ARCA race? Tell you what, and I know we've talked in, in the days since the ARCA race, but it was one of the best ARCA races I have seen from start to finish in a long time. By far the best ARCA race of the year. Um, a great event. Uh, had a little bit of everything, including that battle for the lead uh, with, with William Zawalich and Connor Zillage, and then obviously Connor picking up the race win. Uh, he, he seemingly wins in, in everything that he gets in, whether it be on the road courses or on the ovals. Um, a great field of cars. I know another tough hit for, for Amber Balkin uh, may have uh, bruised that foot that was on the road to recovery uh, with another big hit up in turn three uh, midway through the event uh, on Friday night. But um, other than that, a uh, fairly Fairly clean event. You know, there were just enough single car spins to keep things close and, and great racing through the field, especially at the front. Absolutely. And it just it was one of those things too. post race. You heard uh, several drivers just talking about the level of aggression. But nonetheless, I mean, there were some spotters that were unhappy, especially at the end. Connor Zilich's spotter coming over the radio saying zero attempts to pass. William Sawalich tried not once in turn one, but in down the back straightaway to lift the rear end of that pinnacle racing group Chevrolet off the ground. And it just shows you the level of, of aggression you have to have in these ARCA races to go out and win. But kudos to Connor for hanging on. Somehow they didn't wreck because there's probably about three or four times they doored each other on both ends of the racetrack. So um, crazy to see. But, Kyle, I would think that this isn't over between these two because especially on the east side of things, we're going to see them battle it out for more wins here the rest of the year. 
Yeah, still three East races remain on the schedule, which is hard to believe. We're only into the third week of June. And there's only three races left, but they have a, a shortened schedule with a, several combination events. They'll be back on track here again in a few weeks. But, uh, yeah, they're running for the championship there, running for national series wins like we saw at the Iowa Speedway. And you're right, still a lot of uh, a lot of laps left this season for these two to 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 go at it on the racetrack. It provided a lot of entertainment last weekend. Yeah, and William Swalich said post race to our Steve Post lost a little bit of respect for Connor Zilich. So some tempers did. starting to flare up. Some rivalry starting to brew here in the Arkham and Ard series. Of course, you know three of the top five were in the East series. So if you're Andres Perez, yep. you're thinking, what is it going to take for me, who runs the full <laughs> national slate, to get a win? He still has the points lead, Greg Van. Austin, fortunately, was caught up in that Amber Balkan accident, so he took a hit in the points. But just 16, though, separate Andres Perez and, and uh, Greg Van Alt. So still a tight championship at the top in the National Series. But, man, when the East uh, guys and girls come to play, they certainly show up in the big time. So uh, what a race, what a weekend to kick off, or what a race to kick off the weekend at Iowa Speedway. Now, on the other side of the country, well, kind of not really, back toward the East in uh, Virginia, we've got the Dominion Raceway and the Minis. Uh, 125 Minis Mission 125. What a great for Mini Tyrell to put on. Of course, Walter Reed Medical Center children were hosted that weekend, all at the yep. Cars Tour race. It was a cool, cool event. But Brendan Queen, uh, Redemption Kyle, remember he lost this race last year yep. at the very end. I'm pretty sure he just went out and waxed the field on Saturday night. He did. He started on the pole, led every lap, and and was able to pick up the win. I think two and a half seconds there toward the finish of the event uh, when when he was able to take the checkered flag. Out front, the place to be because they were wadding him up before they even got to turn one on lap number one, Deke McCaskill. Uh, you had Kay Brown involved in, in incidents before turn one, and then a couple of laps later, Peyton Sellers had a pretty big uh, hit after a tire went down up in turn number three. So several big contenders. Out early, up front, definitely the place to be, especially early in that event. And that's where Brendan Queen was and stayed for the entire night. And Brendan Queen with the win is now closed within three points of Connor Hall for the late model stock championship points lead. And Kyle, I mean, yep. is this a case of Brendan Queen getting hot or is Connor Hall starting to maybe cool off a little bit? We saw how dominant he was uh, basically in everything he's been driving here early in the season. Yeah, a little bit of both. I mean, uh, you know, Brendan's been in the spotlight a lot here in the last couple months, making those what NASCAR Xfinity Series uh, start about a month or so ago, a little more than that. I feel like ever since then, uh, he has run well in the late model program. So he's gotten hot. Connor may have uh, cooled off a little bit, but, we'll, you know, a little bit of both. We'll it's see. Been fun to watch, though, either way. Absolutely, yeah. Brendan Queen's going to get back in the truck for Tricon at uh, Nashville coming up uh, next right. weekend. So we're going to talk about that for sure with him. Up next for the Cars Tour Caraway Speedway, July 4th weekend on July 3rd. William Byron slated to join the late model stock field there as well. So, of course, when William Byron teams up with Donnie Wilson, like, good luck. It's him against the rest of the field. So we'll see if that's the case when they go to Caraway in a few weeks. ASA Stars National Tour, of course, it was the Father's Day double with Madison on Friday and on Sunday. It was the uh, big Milwaukee Mile race, the Father's Day 100. Dawson Sutton scored his first super late model win. Of course, he just started uh, racing in the Truck Series part-time for Rackley War a few weeks ago, but got the big... Big win at the Milwaukee Mile. Of course, that young racer's career really starting to take off, kind of progressing from the Nashville Fairgrounds, kind of pro late model series, and moving on up to the super late models. Caden Quapel had a strong weekend in the pro late models as well. He finished fourth in the Capital 100, though, for the super lates at Madison. Uh, what do you think, Kyle, about this double? I kind of like the double, right? When you've got kind of a caravan going from Madison to Milwaukee, and obviously Ty Majeski though, and he's in the field, it's... Everybody knows that that's the guy you have to beat, and certainly that was the case again here this weekend. I like the double, and yeah. I, I'm sure I'm sure the teams like the double as well, unless they have issues in race one, and that can make for a long uh, three days uh, trying to get the car back together and, and on the racetrack for race number two. But Ty Majeski had nearly a perfect weekend, one Friday night's Capital 200 to open the weekend, finished, I believe, second, uh, was passed late in that race at Milwaukee by uh, Daw uh, Dawson Sutton to claim the win there, uh, and Majeski having to settle for second. So um, a fun doubleheader there for the super late models. 
well, I think I saw 16, 17 cars down a little bit in, in car count, especially at Milwaukee, but to be expected when you have so much racing in a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, and Ty Majeski, you remember, won these races last year, but again, not yep. running full-time this year, so I don't know if that maybe had a play in it when you just kind of cherry-pick and, and hop in the car after a while. Maybe that was the case, but nonetheless, what great racing we had. And uh, by the way, Casey Roderick, two strong finishes, very consistent this season, 24-point lead in the ASA Stars National Tour as they head to Anderson, the Red Bud 400, one of the iconic crown jewels of super late model racing in Indiana coming up later in the month of July. That's July 20th. So, uh, yeah, something to be interesting to follow when we go there next month. Some other winners, Kyle John Hollerman wins at Bowman Gray. Tim Brown had 99 career wins going in. Everybody had the 100 signs ready to go, but they're going to have to wait another opportunity to do, to uh, throw those up at Bowman Gray Stadium. And Bubba Pollard, Money in the Bank, we talked about it when we recorded this show last week. It was going on at Marn Michigan's uh, Berlin Raceway. He had to do it the hard way, Kyle. Outside passes on Blake Rowe and a guy named Eric Jones who's won this event in the past. Yeah, and he saved his stuff yeah. uh, along the way. Fairly long event there at Berlin Raceway. A couple of competition cautions sprinkled throughout the event if there were no natural cautions. Uh, so they used those competition cautions to their advantage. Uh, he knew they were going to close the field up late in the event, and they did, and he was able to capitalize, take the win, start it up front. Never really fell out of the top five, top six, and uh, was able to to take the win and the big paycheck from Jeff Striegel, who, you know, helps operate that facility on a on a weekly basis. Saw Jeff down in Victory Lane doing the post race interview on the live stream. Uh, congratulations to Jeff. Had had it what appeared to be great weather, Mother Nature cooperating with him this year, and uh, a great crowd came out to uh, to support the event midweek last Wednesday night. Yeah, and a heck of an after party too. You know, Jeff knows how to yeah. throw a good party, and they had the, the stands, or not the stands, but that party area is still packed with live music going on after the race. Saw Jeff this week, and of course anchoring our MRN coverage at Iowa, and he just had a big old smile on his face, so another successful weekend. Congratulations to Bubba Pollard, and even with some challenges too, running a new tire there this year, uh, didn't have the Hoosier ST3s like we normally have seen, so the driver's had to adapt to that but overall we had some fantastic racing out there at the money in the bank 150 of course still uh, have uh, the uh, battle at berlin coming up here yep. in about a month and a half or so so we'll all have all eyes on that all right justin bonsignor is gonna have a big weekend as we mentioned saturday double header with the nascar wheel and modified tour and his first start in the nascar xfinity series we're gonna talk to him he's coming up next after this break on nascar coast to coast brought to you by wheelin engineering Wheelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers and warning systems for the automotive, aviation and mass notification industries worldwide. Wheelan products are designed, sourced and manufactured in America and tested on site to meet the toughest industry standards. Wheelan Engineering, manufactured in America for over 70 years. We never left and we're here to stay. Welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Wheelan Engineering, manufactured in America for over 70 years. Wheelan Engineering, as promised, joining us via Zoom, the man doing double duty on Saturday at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. We're talking about Justin Bonson, your three-time Wheelan Tour champion, and of course going to make his Xfinity debut for J uh, J uh, Joe Gibbs Racing in the 19 car this weekend. Justin, I know there's been a lot of prep going in the last couple of weeks. Where are we at with that, and are you starting to get a little nervous as we count down the days until you get behind the wheel? Yeah, I'm ready to uh, just get back on the wheel and start driving the cars. Um, we've had a couple weeks off of the tour and uh, a lot of prep work with JGR in the meantime. But, uh, yeah, all that stuff is um, it's getting tiresome and um, it, it is a lot. So I just want to get behind the race uh, wheel of the race car and then have some fun. But uh, everybody's been really helpful at JGR with getting us up to speed from the crew chief Seth down to the spotter and everybody in between. It's been uh, really welcoming and just looking forward to getting to the track this weekend and seeing how we stack up. It's been a couple of weeks since this opportunity has been announced for you and, and JGR at New Hampshire Motor Speedway this weekend. How did this deal come about for you? Uh, kind of all stems back to the ARCA, the ARCA test, the Road to Daytona program that Ron Drager uh, from ARCA and NASCAR have put together. Um, they originally uh, invited Ron Silk, the past, uh, past year's champion. He uh, was unable to make it last minute. They called me up, asked me if I wanted to go. 
Uh, obviously, we know that turned into uh, the Arca ride at Daytona for the race. And then we got home and spoke with, uh, you know, Ken Mass and I. Uh, been with him for 15 years on a tour, business partners together outside of racing. And um, we just thought, you know, if we're going to do the, anything further with this, what's the next best uh, decisions and what's best for me personally and our partners involved. And um, we kind of agreed to try and pursue some Xfinity stuff, made some phone calls to right to the top. We went to uh, to Gibbs and to JRM and made some phone calls and everybody was really helpful. And, you know, within the first or second call with JGR, uh, Steve D'Souza, the, the vice president of Xfinity, um, it was like, hey, we have New Hampshire open, and I think that would be a really cool opportunity to to do both races. It's in your hometown. A lot of uh, a lot of hype could be behind it, and um, you know, we were able to put the funding together and, and make it all happen. It's uh, it's all come together fairly quickly. I think this has only been going on really since uh, late April, so or early April. So um, it's um, really stems back to the ARCA test and just kind of scratching an itch and and just uh, you know trying to check a few things off as I get a little older uh, in my career. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to miss opportunities like this when you have them uh, presented to you, like with JGR, it's going to be an amazing opportunity and, and a capable car of winning. So um, you can't really turn down opportunities and we were able to make it work with all our partners. And you mentioned too, this kind of being in your, in your backyard, being from New York and, and being in New England and running at New Hampshire places you want to with the tour. What has the hype kind of been like? Have people reached out to you and, and family? And, I mean, I'm assuming you're going to have quite a crowd out there with some Justin Bonds in your t-shirts on Saturday. Yeah, it's been really good feedback so far. I think, um, you know, our social media channels have been doing well and it uh, seems like we have a lot of people interested, which is great. And uh, anything that helps shed light back on the, the NASCAR Modified Tour is is great for us. Um, so if we can help in any way with that, that's awesome. And um, I think it will be, uh, you know, a great opportunity. I've obviously, a lot of my fan, friends and family um, come to this race anyways because of the, the biggest, it's the biggest race of the year for the tour. Um, but we'll do, do have a good crowd coming and just having the whole tour team there will make it even more special. So the those guys are like family as well. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to it and just hoping that it, uh, it all goes as smooth as we hope. Obviously, you know the racetrack. You have a couple of wins there on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, including this race a year ago. How have you prepped for the Xfinity car? Is there, you know, I'm assuming there's probably not much simulator time. Or is uh, there? Yeah, there was. There was a, a similar time opportunity presented to me, but I uh, don't do very well with motion and uh, <laughs> oh. didn't last very long. That's, uh, that's a common thing they say in the simulator. And uh, I didn't I didn't get comfortable. I never even got comfortable in it. Um, so we scratched that plan. Uh, I have been doing a little bit of racing at home just to uh, just to log laps. Obviously, I'm very familiar with the facility. So um, I know the ins and outs, but just the difference in the cars is going to be the biggest thing. And I don't think until you get out there for practice, you're really going to be able to actually simulate that in any way so um yeah we we did that i got a little bit of pit practice um at the jgr shop just trying to you know understand how different those cars are compared to ours uh coming down pit road so um we're gonna learn a lot in that 20 minute practice and the first stage and i mean probably all the way till the checker flag so hopefully by then we're still in position and i uh, figure it all out yeah that certainly is a challenge and you know, we talked to carson quapel and bubba pollard you know of course been in the xfinity series for a couple times already and they said that was the biggest thing is there's not much time to learn so most of that's going to happen in the race but for you running that arc race at daytona granted the racetracks are completely different but learning what a stock car feels feels like compared to the modified how critical looking back was that race going into this weekend i definitely think it helped just learning how big the cars are you know obviously with a modified you can see the right front i've been doing it for for so long now you know where your nerf bars are you know you know your surroundings very, very well and you can you can kind of gauge um, you know if you crowd a guy on entry you know how much room you're giving people and you know your surroundings very well uh the arca race you know there was a couple times i was uh, top of three wide you know on entry and kind of felt like, you know, tensed up a little, thought you were going to, you know, rub the wall and you, you kind of learn, okay, the car is not as big as you think. So just learning those surroundings, I think will be helpful. Obviously it's going to be totally different here, just being on a short track, but um, it doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt. I don't think in any way to have that experience. Do you lean on Ryan Priest at all, who kind of made his name at that racetrack in that race car a few years back? Yeah, that's definitely been the comparison. And I, you know, there's no aspirations to try and make an attempt like right. Ryan did to, uh, at this point in my career at 36, I want to finish my career in the modifieds. I would love to do this a handful of times if, if everything works out, but I have leaned on Ryan um, from the first, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the first ARCA phone call up until yesterday, we talked about uh, just coming down pit road and, and all the things that go into it. So uh, he has been great from the business side of it because he's, 
pretty much done it on his own, you know, or at least been heavily involved in it. And then obviously the racing side of it, um, you can trust and, and lean on him. And he's, he's very good. He, um, he, his biggest advice yesterday was just don't overthink it and don't go into anything with any preconceived notions of what could go wrong. Just, you know, take it all in and you'll be fine. And, um, really it's the pit road and, and all those little things that, uh, are going to make the day important. So he was, uh, he's been really great this whole time. Uh, he busts my chops at the same time. So it's, it's still, you know, still a good friendship, but, uh, really appreciative of everything he's done for us so far. And not just Ryan Priest, but if you look at your teammates, I mean, not only on the regular, you know, full-time guys like a like a Sheldon Creed or, or Chandler Smith, but you've got Christopher Bell in the camp this weekend too as well. So how much are you going to lean on them and have you already as, as far as competition meetings and things like that? What have they kind of provided for you already? I've sat in on a few competition meetings while I was down doing my seat fittings and similar stuff. Uh, didn't really talk to them to uh, them that much, but I know at the racetrack, um, I've met Sheldon uh, Cree before. He's, he's very helpful just listening to Chandler Smith uh, in the competitions meeting. They're all very knowledgeable guys, and they know what you're talking about. So I uh, definitely will lean on them. And then obviously Christopher Bell, if I can get any chance to pick his brain. Um, you know, hopefully we can just go out and follow him in the first, <laughs> first stint of practice and see what, he, see what he's doing and, and try and you know speed up the learning curve. So I'm hoping those guys will be really helpful. I'm sure they will. Um, but yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll work on that first thing Friday morning and, um, you know, hopefully they're as welcoming as I assume they will be. I think he's won like his last three times there for Christopher Bell. So, you know, inc in, you, you include his wins with Priest's win. And then I'm sure Kyle's won there for the team years ago. So that, uh, that whole Xfinity program really strong at the magic mile. Let's talk about Modified for a moment. Uh, you are the defending winner of the Mohegan Sun 100. Huge field expected this weekend, including your buddy Priest, along with Doug Kobe and, and the rest of the gang. What's, uh, what's the key to winning at New Hampshire? Uh, I mean, obviously the draft we've seen for decades now is, is a big part of it, but, you know, what else? You gotta have a good car more than anything. Yeah. Um, you know, you can, you can hang on in the draft, um, you know, but to, to really control the races, like we've been able to do the last couple of years, um, it, it really goes back to having a good car. You got to be able to drive into the corner, you know, as deep as you possibly can and, and have that car underneath you and then still roll the center and then drive forward really good off. And we've had really good long run cars, um, before the rain delay last year, we were actually fortunate enough to break away from the draft. So, um, you know, if that race goes green, you might not even need the draft. It's just, uh, it typically plays out where the caution will come with 30 to go and, you know, on fresher tires everybody can kind of stay closer together but uh, you have been seeing that a couple cars are breaking away over the last bunch of years um you know there's more and more technology in these cars each and every year and they're not just uh, big parachutes like they always were and guys are getting them down on, down on the ground and and arrows starting to play a little bit uh, a little bit of hand, uh, a little bit of a factor and um i think the cars just are able to get away from each other a little more so um but you'll still see a, a last lap pass or a last lap block so um i'm hoping that we can um I, i'm sure the move I made last year coming off of turn two is not going to be the move that wins the race this year. But, um, you know, it's I've learned over the last couple of years, don't really put too much um, pre-race thought into it. You'll just psych yourself out and you just have to, you know, those last couple laps, try and think of what the best decision is going to be, what those other guys have been doing in previous laps. And and hopefully uh, you make the right decision. But you never know. You could um, you could make it off of turn four as a winner. Or you could be in a ball of fire in turn three. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, heck, we had a heck of a photo finish with you last year. Um, when you talk about this series, too, and we go to a lot of short tracks, tire management is key, saving your stuff. How much of that are you doing at a place like New Hampshire that's a little bit bigger and races, like you said, a little more pack racing and things like that with the draft? How, how big is saving your equipment uh, on a track like New Hampshire? Yeah, not at all. The tires are really, really hard at, at Loudon, and they last forever. I mean, I think we've they, during those 250 races years ago, we we would just pit for fuel and not tires. Sometimes, you know, if it's under green, so uh, the tires are are really strong there. We can go forever, and uh, more more or less, you just got to hope that you get the caution where you can pit for fuel. Um, that's been kind of our concerns the last couple of years. Is you get a caution at lap five or ten, and then it goes green. And you're wondering, are we going to make it? And then, you know, obviously the late rate caution comes out and it kind of throws that all out the window. But uh, yeah, it's it's nice to just go up there and, and have a big speedway race where you're just driving your guts out the whole time, passing for the lead and just trying to put on a show for the fans because um, it, it is a lot of fun. We've been racing a lot of bull rings the last couple months. We really haven't raced that much, honestly, yeah. on the tour. So I haven't raced much this year and uh, chomping at the bit. We've had a couple weeks off and then we have another month off after this. So um, it's a little uh, it's a little up and down right now the second half for the summer will be uh you know pretty steady but um yeah looking forward to loud and, and 
and we've been so fast up there the last couple of years that we really, really do hope to go up there and uh, just be the same and, and put ourselves in position when the white flag flies. Six races in, I believe top six finishes in all of those events and, and a win under your belt as well. How would you kind of summarize the uh, the first six events coming off of those three short tracks over the last uh, six weeks or so? Yeah, it's been pretty good. You know, it's it's hard to complain, but, you know, we've had so much success over the last bunch of years with Ryan Stone that when you're not contending for the wins, obviously we're all as a team a little down on ourselves, and that's a tough uh, – we we all hate to act that way, but it's just part of how we are, our culture's become, and um, Silk's kind of been putting it on everybody, um, you know, very, very strong each and every week. He could have won five out of the six races, I think, easily so far this year. So uh, we are working hard to try and get a little better on our short track stuff. I think we'll be really good at Loudon. It's totally different, but um, we've struggled a little bit tight for a while now. The, the tires during those COVID years kind of threw people for a loop, and we think that they're, you know, maybe more like they were before COVID. And we just, we are, we evolved our setups and just haven't taken some of that stuff back out. So we made some headway, we think, at Seekonk, but that's a tough place as well. So I'm um, looking forward to Loudon, but then looking forward to getting back to Monadnock with, uh, you know, we didn't run that great there. So we're hoping that the changes we made at Seekonk will hopefully start showing some dividends at every other racetrack. So, um, yeah, we got a lot going on. We're moving our shop here in, uh, right after Loudon to North Carolina. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to getting settled in and then, uh, you know, Hopefully we can have a good summer and get ourselves, you know, 14 points is not a lot, but it is a lot in this point format. So we're trying to, you know, hopefully chip away at it this week and, and have a strong summer and get back into it. Okay. So what's, what's the decision-making process of moving the shop down, down here to North Carolina? What, how did that come about? It's real simple. Ryan Stone, my crew chief, um, just just doesn't want to live in Connecticut. <laughs> tired, <laughs> um, of the, tired of the cold. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like the cold. He um, he did live in North Carolina for a handful of years before he worked for us and just loved it there. And uh, it's been kind of a long term goal um, that they've been talking about for a few years. So just him and the cars are moving. Um, my whole my whole team, pit crew included, my, myself and Kim Massa will still be based out of New York, but uh, puts a little more work uh, on the team logistically to get back and forth. But we're we're working that all out. Uh, Fury Race Car. Our, our chassis builder has has some shop space we're gonna have for the next uh, handful maybe a year year and a half until we can build our own place but um yeah happy it's like happy wife happy life it's, uh, happy crew chief happy life we hope so um yeah he just uh he's getting a little older and wants to settle in down south and 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 have his uh you know forever home nice my final question for you about the tour the health of it right now i know we've talked about this in the past seems to have gained some more traction this year than we have seen in the past and and maybe i've heard some of that might be due to shortening the schedule by just a couple of races but a shorter schedule nevertheless compared to what we had last year yeah, I definitely think um, the shorter schedule was something that was, you know, very adamant in the garage area. And Joey Denowitz um, and Jimmy Wilson at NASCAR both listened to all the team owners, drivers, crew chiefs, um, and and listened very well and and dropped a couple races. Um, you know, as a racer, you want to race more, but it's just not um, it's not feasible in this day and age with uh, with everybody being volunteers. I mean, even a lot of the drivers, we're all volunteer. Um, you know, nor work normal jobs during the week. So just to be away that much and then to have some family time as I'm learning, it's more important than being at the racetrack sometimes. So, um, yeah, I think NASCAR listened very well. They've made some changes also over the last couple of weeks um, to hopefully reduce some tire inventory and shorten up the days and shorten up some practices just by a little bit. Um, so I think they're they're definitely listening. I think it's also just really tough times right now. There's a lot of other modified tours with a lot of other options, uh, a lot of open shows, but Outside of some very, I mean, even the large, large ping open shows are not getting that 50 car count anymore. So I think it's just a time that we're living in. Um, you know, maybe it'll get better. But, um, you know, I think to have 30 something cars at Loudon is good. That's uh, almost a six or eight car increase from last year. I was a little concerned. Um, I think uh, I think the summer will be a little bit stronger. Uh, we should you know, hopefully stay in the 24 to 25 at the lowest would be great. Uh, I think that's, you know, it's a good field at the minimum. So I think NASCAR is listening. Um, but at the same time, it's still tough. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other opportunities, a lot of other options and people paying big money. Um, so I think that's going to be uh, important to keep uh, evolving the purses to keep up with uh, some other people that are paying bigger, bigger event uh, purses.
It's a really good point. Yeah, I appreciate your insight on that. Before we let you go, i got to ask you, too, this year alone, we've seen so many NASCAR regional drivers from, you know, late model ranks like Brendan Queen and Carson Quapple get shots at the big time. Obviously, you from the modified world. Is it a point of pride when you're like the next guy like this weekend is kind of all short track guys are on you to see how you do? And so far, everybody's done really well. So is there a point of one pride and two pressure to kind of carry the NASCAR regional banner, you know, for those drivers as you take to the national stage this weekend? I definitely think so, because obviously, you know, Bubba and, and a lot of these, you know, like Butterbean, uh, <laughs> Queen, Brandon McQueen, yeah. uh, just Butter watching Bean. them run those races, um, it, you know, I tuned in and watched and, and followed along on Twitter just as much as I could because of knowing that how successful they are in short track racing. Um, you want to see how they do at that rank. And I obviously knew I was going to make this attempt. So it's like, you kind of like, okay, they, they fit right in and, and picked up the speed real quick. So it's like, you're hoping that you can do the same. So, um, uh, I don't really feel any pressure. Um, I've, it's a totally different animal animal to me, these race cars, but I, I wouldn't have signed up for it. If I didn't think we could contend for the win, there's no point in going to the racetrack. If you don't think you can win, we're in a JGR car, obviously a top 10 would be still a really good day, but we just want to put together a really solid day. And I've said this a few times, if we could shed some light on, on that modified race and, and just how good some of the younger guys are in our series, um, if it helps them in any way, get, uh, get opportunities. Um, it's very tough to get opportunities, but if it could shed some light and help anybody else in the future, that would be a win for me. Um, I'm a little over the hill when it comes to that looking full time for it. But uh, if I could help a guy like Austin beers or anything like that, just get some notice of uh, how good of a race car driver he is. And he gets an opportunity. That'd be awesome. That's awesome. Spread the word. Absolutely. Well, Justin, congratulations on your season success so far. Best of luck to you this weekend. We'll be watching, man. And uh, first off, just enjoy it, right? Don't just take a minute to soak it all in because uh, not a lot of folks get this kind of opportunity. So best of luck. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. That's Justin Bonson. Your double duty this weekend. Again, the NASCAR Wheel Modified Tour Mohegan Sun 100 and the NASCAR Xfinity Series in his debut for Joe Gibbs Racing. Coming up next, we've got the calendar and some news and notes here on Coast to Coast. Stick around. Wheeland Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers and warning systems for the automotive, aviation and mass notification industries worldwide. Wheeland products are designed, sourced and manufactured in America and tested on site to meet the toughest industry standards. Wheeland Engineering, manufactured in America for over 70 years. We never left and we're here to stay. Welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan Engineering. K. Rick, great conversation with Jay Bonsignor. And I tell you what, it's I always curious as a driver if you're focused on the championship and your full time job, or then when you have this kind of opportunity where the focus goes. But it seems like he's locked in for both. And honestly, running the JGR Toyota may have an opportunity to sweep both this weekend if all goes according to plan. He's got a pretty good shot. Uh, it could be tough, although we saw Ryan Priest jump in their Xfinity car, and I think it was like the first or second time out at New Hampshire, uh, pick up the race win and did so again at the Iowa Speedway later that season. So uh, not a lot of full fendered experience for Justin. So it'll be interesting to see how he adapts. And like you mentioned, at the same time, having to focus on the NASCAR wheel and modifieds, they practice and qualify Friday night, the Xfinity series, they practice and qualify. I think Friday afternoon, right before the modifieds hit the racetrack, and then obviously both races on Saturday. So he's got a busy, uh, busy 48 hours or so in front of him, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he does. And it's going to be fun to watch, too, as well. So let's dive into the calendar this weekend, starting with the Mohegan Sun 100 at New Hampshire, of course, with the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Seventh race of the season. We're one shy of halfway already. Cannot believe it. Time has absolutely flown by. There's more than 30 drivers entered, and you mentioned about the tall task to maybe pull off the you know two-race sweep. Ryan Priest is back in the field for his second start this year in the Tour, and he comes to a racetrack that he's won at before. He's a former winner at New Hampshire. Ryan is always going to be a tough, tough competitor, but Man, at New Hampshire, Justin Bonsignor is going to have his work cut out for him when he's got him in the field, as well as uh, Bobby Santos, who's trying to go for eight wins at the racetrack here this weekend. 
Yeah, and you got Doug Kobe, uh, who, who's running for Tommy Baldwin, Bobby Santos, like you mentioned in the field. Uh, seven wins, I believe, at the Magic Mile. Most of those coming with the Tineo number 44 team. Uh, looking for number eight this weekend for Bobby, who hard to believe has been running a modified either full-time or part-time for the better part of the last two decades. Not running full-time these last several years because of his commitments uh, over in the, uh, I guess, the Midwest, uh, running a lot of USAC races on asphalt. So, Good to see Bobby back here in the Northeast this weekend. You know, Patrick Emmerling is in the field. You go down the line, uh, Austin Beers, who's been so strong this year, Eric Goodale. It's wide open. It's going to be fun to watch. Uh, Saturday evening, uh, they're going to be racing right up against darkness. I think the green flag is right around 645 after the Xfinity race. Sunset about 815-ish up there in New Hampshire. So, uh, We'll see. Hopefully it's a nice, clean 100 laps and we have those, you know, 35 lead changes that we saw a year ago. Yeah, 100 percent. Actually, I believe we're racing on the actual summer solstice, so it should be the longest day of the year. So hopefully that sun keeps they may need it. high in the sky. Yeah, absolutely. For <laughs> sure. And don't forget Luke Baldwin, too, making his tour debut for Sadler Stanley Motorsports. And uh, that's going to be a fun opportunity yep. for him to race. And obviously, Tommy, as a dad, to not only watch his own car with Doug Kobe, kind of keep an eye on what Luke's doing out there on the racetrack. Again, that is on Saturday night, 630. Uh, you can watch that coverage on Flow Racing. And uh, best of luck to Justin Bonsignor. Now, the Zinsser Smart Coat 150 at Mid-Ohio. We go from the ground pounders on the oval on the mile. We go to the left and rights of Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in the Arca Menard Series. 150 miles on the road course, Kyle. On Friday night on FS1, the first of two road course races for the series this year. It's a fast racetrack. They had a fresh repave after 2023, after their season completed. I would expect there'd be a lot of comers and goers, but a big disparity between the front half of the field and the back half of the field should make for some interesting racing this weekend. We saw that a couple of years ago uh, when Motor Racing Network was last year covering the Arc Menard series in the rain, uh, in a race that at least started in the rain. And then the sun popped out, the track dried. Um, it, it was a kind of a tale of two different races on a racetrack that is completely different front side with those long straightaways, that long keyhole corner uh turn number three that leads to the back stretch and then the very technical back side of the track through the s's and and the the valley of trees there between turns eight and nine and into the final set of corners that lead you onto the front straightaway really cool racetrack i haven't seen an entry list yet but it's connor zillich in the field i assume he is he's not actually connor mosak is going to be in the uh, pinnacle racing group 28 which is again no slouch there and he's been you know proven a winner in the arkham menard series but Everybody wants to focus on William Sawalich, Gio Ruggiero there in the field again as, as kind of favorites. But Brent Cruz, if you don't, if you forgot, he's a TA2 Watkins Trans Glenn. Am champion and nearly won the race at Watkins Glen last year. He's in the field for Venturini Motorsports in that 55 car. I would put my money on Brent Cruz going out there. And especially he's got so many laps at Mid-Ohio in other forms of racing Maybe the youngster can get his uh, second Arkham Menard Series win. Of course, he won on the dirt last year, but maybe a road course win for the young driver out of Denver, North Carolina. So we'll see. William Swalch is the only driver that finished top five last year that's in the field. So if you're looking at experience, you could lean on William, too. And, and obviously, he's been great on the road courses, winning at Portland. So uh, we'll see what happens. Some West guys in the field. Tyler uh, Tyler Reif is in the field. Todd Souza. Interesting to make the trek from California over to mid Ohio. Not exactly yep. a tourist destination, but a great a great racetrack to get some road coursing experience on it. So we'll be interesting to see what happens. Of course, Andres Perez has the points lead coming in to this event by sixteen. Other events, Kyle. I know uh, if Dave Moody is listening, I think he's actually headed up there this weekend since it's an MRN off weekend. The 45th Governor's Cup at uh, Thunder Road in Barrie, Vermont on Thursday night. Cole Custer, Xfinity Series champion from last year, is in the field. A staple among late model racing in New England. Kyle, have you ever been to Thunder Road? I haven't. What kind of racetrack is that? What, What can we expect this weekend? I've been to Thunder Road. It's a racetrack with a lot of character. Is it a quarter mile? I think it is. Yes. I mean, it's a it's a tight little racetrack with walls that are angled outwards. So if you if you get a little too high off of turn four, and it happens at least once a, a race program, 
Uh, car hits the wall and the car immediately climbs the wall. Oh they, my they nicknamed it uh, Ken Squire, actually, who who helped promote the facility and build the facility and was so instrumental in, in making that one of the nicest short tracks in the country. Named it the Widowmaker uh, years ago because of all the carnage that occurred there. And, uh, you know, we expect probably the same if you're not familiar with the racetrack, kind of like Cole Custer, uh, may want to be aware that the walls aren't exactly straight up and down. And if you get into them off of especially turn four, it could mean trouble. Well, this is the second leg of the newly dubbed Ken Squire Cup series for the Thunder Road uh, late model series and, and teams. So, well fitting, but uh, we'll see if they're locals as uh, Chip Grenier is in the field, Cody Blake, Jimmy Hebert, and more can kind of take it to Cole Custer and some of the other drivers entered. Uh, speaking of, I, I, this must be political weekend. We have the Governor's Cup in, in Vermont, and we've got the Senator's Cup at Stafford. Kyle, if the rain holds off, what kind of field do you think uh, you're going to see there on Friday for at Stafford? Uh, we're expecting roughly 30, 32 SK modifieds for the Senators Cup and one of the senators here in Connecticut. His name, Jeff Gordon. No. No, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> his, his name is Je- Senator Jeff Gordon will be in attendance on Friday night for the Senators Cup for the SK modifieds. We're also trying to finish the Casella Waste Open 80 Open Modified race from what will now be Two weeks ago, uh, they are five laps into that race. Woody Pitcat is the race leader. And if we go off on Friday night uh, at around 8 o'clock, he will have led the race for 337 hours. Wow. that's Not see, that I did the math. But. I was about to say, Kyle <laughs> was over there punching on his calculator as he was making his notes for sure. That's bizarre. Not, why don't you guys just restart the race? Because we ran five laps. So we have 75 to go. And we're going to pick up where we left off on on uh, on Friday night. All right. Mother Nature pending. OK, well, we've there's no wood in the studio, but I've got my fingers crossed for you. Uh, plenty of other racing coming up on the weekly schedule of things. Jennerstown, Riverhead, Florence, Hickory, Bowman Gray Stadiums in action and Langley all on the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts weekly schedule. Of course, NASCAR Canada at Eastbound International this weekend. Round three of the season. We'll see if Mark Antoine Camerand can repeat as for the or be a first time repeat winner. Same with Andrew Ranger, who picked up the first two wins of the 2024 season. All right, K. Rick, before we let everybody go who is our k rick driver of the week for uh what is this june 19th june 19th yes it is and john holloman the driver you mentioned a bit earlier that won at bowman great stadium had an absolutely spectacular save after contact with burt myers i think it was coming to the white flag it was in the closing laps of the race. It might have been the last lap, but Holloman was able to pick up the win over Burt, uh, who has to wait to get that uh, milestone win at least one more week. Uh, an incredible race, as it usually is for the Modifieds, but a little bit more intense at the front of the field last Saturday night for John Holloman to pick up that 50-lap feature win sideways, all but in the grass, all but turned around and was able to save the car maintain the lead and hold off one of the stadium's best. That's right. And I it's only a matter of time before he gets his 100th. We're talking about Burt Meyer. Yeah. So, uh, yep. so we'll see what happens. But yeah, great racing so far at uh, the stadium here in 2024. More to come again this weekend. Well, MRN is off this weekend. Some of us are still working. Of course, I'm headed up to Watkins Glen on IMSA side. But MRN has got a break this weekend. Of course, good luck to everybody up at Loudoun in New Hampshire. Motor Speedway will be back next week for a little truck series in music city uh for uh kyle i t- guess good luck this weekend thinking of you and uh we'll we'll chat to you next week hopefully we have something good to talk about at stafford and we kind of can play a little catch up here this weekend it's gonna be a full weekend senator's cup friday night and then i'm heading up to new hampshire to take it all in on uh, saturday and sunday a lot happening especially with a lot of the local guys like Justin Bon Senor and and also Glenn Reen, who will be in the field for the NASCAR Xfinity Series as well. One of our modified regulars up here in this part of the country. Sounds like a plan. Enjoy it, Kyle. And uh, thank you all for tuning into this week's episode of NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Wheelan Engineering, manufactured in America for over 70 years. Wheelan Engineering. For Pat Jaggers, our producer, and of course, Kyle Ricky, my co-host, I'm Chris Willner. We'll see you next time here on Coast to Coast.